Whoa! Who are you? Hi, I'm the Mobile Home Park Fairy, and I'm here to grant you one wish. You could have whatever you want. I want to merge a Seiko Turtle with a Waffle Iron. I want it to have a Sapphire Crystal, none of that Hardlex crap. And I also want a ceramic bezel. I can do that, but wouldn't you prefer to wish to end global warming? It'd be a great benefit to humanity. Nah. Can I interest you in nuclear disarmament? Mm, no, thank you. All right, your wish is granted. <gasps> thank you, Mobile Home Park Fairy. You're looking at the Seiko SRP E03, which will probably be one of the most important watches of 2020. This watch is in the lineage of entry-level Seiko dive watches that have been given the nickname the Turtle. The big news about this Turtle is that it finally has a sapphire crystal and a ceramic bezel. I'm naming this watch the Waffle because its dial background texture looks like a waffle iron. I bought the waffle at its full MSRP of $625 from Long Island Watch. While you can buy this watch for less on eBay right now, I'm urging people, as always, to avoid the gray market, and that includes Amazon. I recommend buying this watch from an authorized Seiko dealer only. This is an international version of the Waffle. I'm the first person to review this particular model. I am an independent watch journalist. The Waffle was paid for in full by me, and I received no payments nor gifts in exchange for this review. The Waffle comes in this cardboard box. It comes with two booklets. One booklet is an instruction manual. The other contains information about a three-year warranty as well as more instructions. In the back of the warranty booklet is a warranty card. The fields on my warranty card were never filled out. I love the hell out of the Waffles dial and I have no complaints whatsoever about the dial. I think the dial's awesomeness speaks for itself. I don't have to describe to you how great the brushing on the hands is nor how sexy the indexes are, nor how cool the waffle iron dial background is. You're seeing this watch under magnification. Looking at the waffle with my naked eye, I don't start to make out the waffle iron pattern until I'm about a foot away from the watch. Some people like magnifiers on watches. Some people hate them. I love and appreciate the Waffle's Day-Date -day magnifier as I have poor eyesight and it allows me to easily read the day and date. On the Day-Date -day wheel, a black font is used to indicate that it's a weekday. A blue font is used to indicate that it's a Saturday. And a red font is used to indicate that it's a Sunday. I think this is pretty cool. I don't know if the flat crystal has anti-reflective coating but I can tell you that whether it has it or not, the dial is extremely readable in direct sunlight. The crystal sits below the ceramic bezel insert. The bezel insert is shiny and nicely printed and beautiful. There's nothing more to say here. Knurling on the bezel itself has exceptional detail. It is smooth as hell to turn, yet grippy. You can do a full bezel rotation in about four turns. The bezel is a little misaligned. There's a little back play. The case has a nice cushion style design. Measured horizontally, the diameter is about 45 millimeters, which is on the big side, but it wears considerably smaller, largely because the much narrower protruding case back is the only thing that comes in contact with your wrist. My wrist is a little over seven inches. I'm getting a little crown poke when I fully extend my wrist up, which I don't notice in regular use. Considering the large diameter of the case, the lug to lug is a reasonable 47.5 millimeters. The case thickness of 13.5 millimeters is pretty normal for this type of watch. The case design is retro and cool and beautiful and I think speaks for itself. I think the finishing of the case is nice as well. 
The case is brushed on top. There is polishing on the bottom portion of the sides of the case. I often complain about polishing and watch cases, but Seiko knows how to do this without making the watch look cheesy. I don't think brushing the entire case would improve this watch. The case has drilled lug holes, as it should at $625. Here's the case back. Absolutely no complaints here. The crown has a nice, stiff delineation between crown positions. The crown pop is not terribly pronounced, though I suspect a good seal is being made, considering how much force it takes to push the crown in before screwing it down. The crown has a slight wobble, nothing remotely like the Orient Kamasu I reviewed recently. I don't think the stem itself wobbles. I think the crown was just attached a little crookedly. The crown isn't signed. I find that pretty disappointing. Aesthetically, the case integration with the end link and the rest of the bracelet is better than the sub $500 watches that I'm used to reviewing, though the bracelet seems more like a hastily conceived generic afterthought than something carefully planned from the beginning to integrate with the case. Also, the end link doesn't fit the case as nicely as I would have liked but I'm not going to quibble about it being off by a tiny fraction of a millimeter at this price point. The end links are not only solid, but curved. The curved end link is a class move. The curve of the end link creates a steep incline, which clearly delineates the case from the bracelet. This makes the watch look a lot classier. It's questionable to me if the curved end link is going to aid that much in wrist conformance as a case back protrudes so much. Notice the arrows on the back of the bracelet's links. Because of these arrows, I assume this watch used cotter pins, which is a common type of friction pin that normal human beings can add and remove using cheap tools. Upon closer inspection, I realized the Waffles bracelet used a tube and pin system, or what some people call a pin and collar system. Instead of botching the tube and pin sizing myself as I have in the past, this time I decided to pay $25 to a jeweler who also botched the job. He took two links out. Here are the tube and pins. Notice how there are two pins, yet there is only one tube. The jeweler lost the tube. Also, he warped the pin closest to the tube. I will need to buy another tube and pin so the watch can be in resellable condition. Did the jeweler tell me he botched the job? Of course not, but he did try to impress upon me what a difficult job he had removing the links. He stated that one of the pins was so hard to pull out that it had required his watchmaker to come in with a press. I naively went home without looking at the tube and pins that he had given me at the store, but it wouldn't have mattered. When I eventually came back to the store to tell the jeweler about the damage, he didn't deny it. He kept repeating what a difficult job it had been and how the tube and pins are normally completely destroyed when dealing with the level of difficulty posed by my watch bracelet. I cannot endorse the waffle because it uses the overly difficult antiquated system of tube and pins. This watch may be fine for mechanically gifted people, but regular civilians like me shouldn't have to pay $625 for a watch, then have to face the frustration and cost of a bracelet connective system that is not made for human beings. At $625, I deserve screw pins. At a minimum, I want cotter pins. I'm pretty sure the Seiko Marine Master and some other expensive watches use the tube and pin system also, but this doesn't make it right. Moving along, the finishing and style of the bracelet is satisfactory, though I find the ultra-thin polished lines at the edges of the mid-links a tad bit cheesy. This squared off portion on the top pin side of the links isn't sharp, but it's rough. It's not that big a deal. You don't notice it when you're wearing the bracelet, though you might notice it when you're picking up the bracelet. This needs to be smoothed better. The big issue for me with the bracelet is its small amount of taper. The Waffles bracelet starts at 22 millimeters. It tapers to 20 millimeters and goes up to 21 and a half millimeters at the clasp. 
at a minimum, I would have liked to have seen the bracelet taper down to 18 millimeters, which would have brought down the width of the clasp. Without taper, the bracelet and the clasp are too big. I don't notice the bulk of the bracelet and clasp that much during daytime use, though my wrists swell up at night and the bracelet falls to the lower wider portion of my wrist and when I wake up, often several times during the night, I feel like I'm wearing a big heavy medieval iron collar around my wrist. Occasionally during the daytime I get this feeling too. The bracelet is pretty smooth. For me, personally, I would say this bracelet is wearable, but venturing precariously close to the unwearable category. It's highly questionable if I could wear the waffle every single day, all day. The watch I wear when I'm not at work is, like the waffle, a 45 millimeter dive watch. However, its bracelet tapers nicely. But despite the good taper, its overall largeness makes me feel claustrophobic at times and I need to take it off. The waffles clasp has a dive extension. Since the manual doesn't explain how to open it, I'll show you. You just pull this up. I find dive extensions gimmicky, but the waffles dive extension doesn't really add that much bulk to the clasp as the dive extension pivots nicely as if it were a link. The dive extension creates a lot of rattle, and some people are going to get annoyed by this. I bought the Psycho 5 Sports for $170 right before Christmas and haven't reviewed it yet. As you can see, the only real difference between the Seiko 5 Sports clasp and the Waffles clasp is that the Waffle has a dive extension. It's the same piece of junk. At $170, I'm not going to object to a garbage clasp. At $625, I am going to have a minor wig out. It's pretty pathetic that the Waffles clasp has a scissor made of thin strips of metal but I think the sheer bulk of the waffles clasp is an even greater screwing to the consumer. Seiko at least attempted to fit the clasp to the links, though not as well as they could have. The waffle is a loom powerhouse. It'll easily last you through the night. It's not a surprise. Seiko has great loom. The waffle uses Seiko's entry-level 4R36 movement, the waffle is running 12 seconds fast a day in the horizontal position and 12 seconds fast a day in the vertical position. This is well within specification.